It is time once again for the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. I got several geek mails last time from people who were upset they thought I, I skipped Mooney's turn. Um, in fact, I did not skip Mooney's turn. What happened was I had the record and pause reversed. So what that looked like was when I went back to, to put the footage together, um, there was a lot of my foot um, with me just kind of playing and getting ready for the the part that you see the video part that's not really what i'm doing when i'm playing i'm not just getting ready for that but i was doing the things that i do when i'm not on camera when the camera was rolling and the part when i was talking about mooney's turn ended up not getting filmed so it just got cut out not a lot happened really all he did was he discovered hecate and she um if he if he successfully tested magic at a minus two which means he had to roll snake eyes essentially um, he would get the, the um, what's it called, the Goldener Stab, which is a magical wand that he can use to face uh, Der Verdampt. Um, I, 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 I'll tell you this, he rolled two fives. Um, so let's go right back into it. We haven't gotten too far in our play, so I'd like to get a little further now instead of talking. Dun, dun, dun. So um, we are, we have just pretty much finished with the the tier one the 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 the, the champions of the the naughty uh lords uh, turn and this event came up dragon event plunder so um what is happening here is the dragon is going to swoop down and take one coin from everyone um on my blog about this where i kind of do the altered rules i think i had typed that the money would be deposited here. I think I'm going to change it and have the money go right to um, half pint. I actually decided that before I started playing. Um, didn't think it was a big enough thing to post about, however. Um, I did that because, you know, his when, once all these um, servants of the nameless pop up, I feel like that's going to be quite a hindrance to everyone else. She basically gets exempt from three certain events, and then this this is kind of her main bonus is this plunder, if I remember correctly. And there's there's not that that much there, so I think you know the inconvenience of having to go back to the dragon's lair um, makes it not as not as good of ability as or not as good of a privilege as Curly. So, um, she gets a coin from everyone. Not the people in the underworld, however. That is one thing they're safe from is dragon events when they're down there, because the dragon doesn't go down there. So, looks like she gets one from Red Tomato, from Fries, and then Curly's Lone Coin. Uh, these two ladies are safe, however, because they're poor. We're at the tail end of Red Tomato's turn, and Tice is all that remains of our middle class adventurers. Pretty much they've just been walking around, picked up a few quests, but nothing too big of note except that there's an archery competition. So I thought you'd want to be privy to the archery competition. Um, basically, again, the people underground are not going to be affected by this event. They weren't invited because they're losers. Um, the people above ground, however, all get to try to make a series of archery tests. Not a good time in the game for this event to come up because you know they're all pretty green uh, so to speak <laughs> um, but maybe not green enough so first we'll start with um, and half pint is out of the competition curly gets to roll three dice pick two curly is out of the competition he was one of the 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 best bets on the competition um, Tice also has a better chance than others. And you know what? I think I'm going to rule in this case that he is allowed to use his magic to aid his archery. Otherwise, it would just be, um, it'd be no point. Uh, so Fries is going to try. Gets two dice. Fries is still in it. Okay, so Fries, well, Fries is still in it. We're going to go through and do one round and then the trickier, trickier round of the competition. Um, Scoots has to roll a two or a three. She did not. Um, Red Tomato needs to get a sixer under. He's using his little gnomon trickery to help his arrow shot. And someone called foul. He did not win. Uh, Tice, she's got a straight seven chance. She's got the, the odds are on her side. She's still in it, so it's down to Fry's and Tice. It's possible no one wins the archery competition. Um, so Fry's now is at a minus one. He's got to get a four or better. It's not very likely for Fry's. 
<gasps> oh my gosh! Uh, Fry's got it. Fry's amazes me again and again. It doesn't fail. So I think that means he gets two green cubes. And, they, and Tice is still in it too. She can... All right. So Fry, wow, that was really good. Um, Tice would really like this though because green archery is her main thing. She can get six or less. And she did it as well. That was that went a lot better than I expected. Um, the archery competition could end up being a game changer here. Ooh, but unfortunately, archery is not going to help Tice against this spider. This spider is vicious and probably the last thing she would want to deal with. So one, she can't use her archery against it. Two, if it beats her, it's going to take away all of her health except for one, which is terrible for her because she, especially because she's got a lot of health. Then if she wins, she doesn't really get a lot out of it. She gets a red and a blue cube, but um, sort of one of her, her disadvantages to kind of balance her out is it takes her more to get um, her abilities to be, to get to roll three dice with an ability. So she's gonna do it with her um, her melee attack, her red. She's gotta get under four, and she does not. That is a bummer for Tice. The world giveth and it taketh away via spider. A weeder is taking another stab at this avatar of the Verdampt. Um, not a super good chance. She's got to get a four or better. And she's going to take another shadow cube as a result. And remember I have this little different rule where every time one of the heroes gets a, a shadow cube they also get a put one of these negative one markers on the map. Um, so where does she want to go? She's still, she's not real big on half pint. Just to prove to you naysayers, I'm not skipping over Mooney. He just went to this tile here, picked up a very, very convenient quest. Um, he has Rhadamanthes here. Um, he just has to bring him to Criterion, and Criterion is low, one uh, tile to his north. So not too hard of a task, but he will get rewarded none the same. A treasure from our special treasure pile here. So Half Pint just encountered a basilisk. She was going to evade, but then upon further consideration, she decided not to. Uh, if she loses to the basilisk, she doesn't get hurt at all, which is what she was afraid of. Um, instead, someone just gets to move her on her next turn. I guess, you know, that would set her back a little bit, but she doesn't move that far. Uh, currently, I don't know if you can tell, her goal appears to be this uh, city of mages. Uh, if she does evade, she can get there next turn. What does she get from the basilisk? She gets a, an experience cube. That would help in the long run. Yeah, it's probably worth, her to, worth it for her to try to fight because um, there's not a huge penalty. At least she doesn't lose any resources. So she's got to get five or better. In fact, choose any two of these dice. We'll see if she made a wise choice or not. And she did. She beat the Basilisk. She's going to take another green cube. I um, hope to get it up to the four mark soon, because then she will truly be a half pint to reckon with. Okay, we have an interesting situation developing uh, right here in this kingdom tile. So here we have Curly, who would really love to take Tice out. He just moved and picked up a quest that was sitting there. Um, I got a place of place a new thing from the bag, but uh, I'll do that after I'm done talking. Then we have Red Tomato, who is still pretty fragile. What Red Tomato, the Noman, Noman really needs to do is build up these numbers. That makes them much better. Um, so as these numbers build up, you know, you're you're getting a lot more bang for that, the buck, more than, than you would with the cubes. Um, Tice, however, is sitting on that one, one uh, health. Her home is right here on the other side of Curly. Um, if she goes there, she can sleep. Uh, her other choice is to try to get to this white village and heal. I think it's a slower rate, though. I think it's one per turn, which would be four turns in order to, to fully rest up. That would take a long time. And furthermore, she has to get past this whatever is here. This could be another monster, which could take her out. Um, I believe when they their descendants don't come back with their cubes, so she would be losing a lot uh, if she is forced to restart. 
it's kind of a tough situation. Uh, we'll see if she can manage to make her way past um, past Curly or not. She has speed on her side, but uh, we'll see. And the, the tile I just drew from the bag is a storm. Um, that reduces everyone's movement to one, which is really bad for Tice right now. Her, her one advantage was speed. Um, she doesn't have that. However, she's lucky in that there's going to be three chances for the storm to pass before she has to go um, take her turn. So hopefully it will pass before uh, she goes. And I, I got to see if they roll before their turn begins or after a turn is over. The storm stayed in play so far. It really slowed down both Fries and Scoots. They weren't able to really do anything on their turn. Um, uh, Red Tomato, on the other hand, he was only one space away from the castle. I have to decide whether duels can happen in the castle. I think probably they can because, I don't know, it feels a little wrong. Like maybe the king would stop it, but maybe it's a sort of a noble thing. Like they can challenge them to a duel and maybe they're scared enough of him of uh, the nameless that they wouldn't um, they wouldn't stop Curly. I might I might make it so there's a 50-50 chance a duel can happen in the castle. That would that makes it more interesting. We'll do that. Um, but Red Tomato was able to get a recipe for the golden ball, which is a good one because the frog is right down there. So that is going to make the the situation here even more interesting. Um, in a way, Tice is the bigger threat than. Um, then uh, red tomato and curly is more is easier. It, it'll be, it would be easier for curly to stop Tice at this point if there if there was a duel. He would just need to to beat her once. Whereas red tomato, he's going to have to blow at least three turns in order to take him out. Um, so there's that. However, red tomato has more access to the start of the quest. Maybe it's better if he just lets him pick it up, though, because then um, Curly can swoop down and snatch it away. We'll we'll just see what happens. Um, it's now Tice's, Tice's turn. However, we'll see if the weather is still unfriendly, and it is. So she's only going to get to move one space, and she's got a tough choice to make. Weeders lost to the third for the third time to the um, the avatar of Durver Damped. Um, so she's got to place yet another minus one token. She's got this area and this area covered. Um, where does she want to put it? She, she could try to make things interesting there. Uh, I don't know that she wants to do that though. I think she's going to put it right here and sort of kind of slowly wall half pint in. So his reward, Mooney's reward for uh, escorting Radamanthes home was a new pair of sandalin. These will add one to his movement. Movement doesn't play a huge role for a while, I will say, in the underworld, but that still can be helpful later on. Half Pint got pretty lucky on her teleporter roll. She made it to the City of Mages on the first try. Um, here's the market that got revealed. Um, I forgot to roll for the storm. She only had one space, so it didn't matter, but the storm's still going. Um, so here we have th two spells. These aren't, these, this one particularly, actually both of them would be very useful if, if someone had magic and money. Um, I don't think she's even going to offer it up for sale. The person who lands there can offer things up for sale to other people and they get a coin if someone buys it. Uh, she's not even going to really offer it up for sale. She has plenty of money um, and they're pretty powerful in the right hands, which is basically Scoot's hands. No one else is very magical at all. Um, and this is another thing. I'm uncertain whether the Gnomon could use these spells. Um, could I mean, add his add his stats together to use those spells. I'm probably going to say no. I don't know. It just, yeah, it, it, I really wish there was some clear ruling on how the Gnomon works with these colored dots. It's it, it's not shown anywhere. I've posted questions, but I've yet to receive an answer. Um, but she is interested, and she might even be convinced to buy Clairvoyance. Her magic skill is not very high, however. Uh, it would take a while for her to bring it back up. I don't think she's going to. She's going to buy this Pegasus, though. And this this is very useful to her because it um, 
it helps deal with her movement issue. She's very slow, but with the Pegasus, for one time, she can just jump somewhere. This uh, Clover kind of works the same way. Um, on any given test, she can just decide to roll five dice instead of one. Um, no sense in keeping her money, and that could prove useful at some point in the future. Luckily for Red Tomato and luckily for Tice, uh, the storm's still brewing, so Curly was only able to go one space. That's not enough to um, endanger either of them, but his presence still menaces, and if the storm clears up right before his next turn, for example, they are in big trouble. There is no way they can escape unless the storm clears up for them. On to uh, Fry's. The storm's still going. Fry's, however, just needs to move one space to see what's under here. And it's a giant. Fry's is going after the giant. Really has no choice. Um, fortunately, the giant is, is pretty good against melee combat. He needs to get a four or less. And Fry's is felled by the giant. He's going to lose one of his precious stones. Tice's turn. She's rolling to see if the storm passes. Um, I'm showing you this roll because it could be mean life or death for her later. Uh, and no, the storm does not pass. She has the option of going one space. Uh, I guess with my 50-50 rule for the castle, the king could protect her. Um, she'll go there in hopes that... Well, that's a trick, though. If she goes there, whether the storm passes or not, Curly can can have a 50-50 chance of attacking her. Whereas if she goes somewhere else, she's got a 1 and 6 for her, 1 and 6 for him. Is that 2 and, two and 6? I wish I knew probability better. Um, she's going to have to... She's going to go this way, I guess, instead. Yay. Weeder's taking another swing at the Avatar. She's just soaking up the Shadow Cubes. Don't know if you noticed. Uh, going turn after turn against the Avatar. Doesn't really, you know, once you get one on a, a stat, might as well go all in. And she does so. Um, I think she beat it this time, though. Four was what she needed, and four is what she got. Um, and so the Avatar, Dace Verdampton, goes on the the card here. If three of those are beaten, that's what calls the Durver Dampton to chaos, which is a tile that's not yet been revealed. Um, which is good for everyone. Now she's got to choose whether or not to use the EC, whether to use the EC, that's the experience cube, to build something up or to use it for money. Uh, knowing Weeder like I do, she would like the money. Bling! So gets a treasure. I'm gonna draw from the middle. And Ooh, she got a cursed thing. Oh, and that's perfect. So it's a cursed weapon. It adds two to her physical stat. She is going to be a terror so long as she's in the underworld. Um, she has an eight. Uh, she does melee with an eight. Um, every time she uses it, however, she gets another shadow cube in that stat, which is not bad because she's got a bunch there anyway. Problem is, she can't use that on the Verdampton. And... Uh, the shadow cubes go away when she exits back to the overworld. So it's only going to be useful in limited circumstances. All right, Moody just found himself face to face with a shotin. It looks like maybe it's a shadow, uh, but we'll call it a shotin. Um, so the gray cube, the gray dot means they have to they have to battle with their least experienced skill. His are all equally least less ex least experienced, so he can he can go with his archery. Um, Aqualad shoots its bow and fails. That's a bummer. He's going to lose one of his valuable valuable stones. Um, elves and Aqualads are not very tough, so he's only got two more chips on his block before he crumbles. Ash. The storm's still brewing. Half Pint decided to hang out in the City of Mages. She would not be able to get very far unless she used her Pegasus, and she doesn't feel the need to use that yet. Um, so she called another market. She still is sitting on three coins. She got to quite the bounty from her dragon master. Um, and wow, what a great... I couldn't... I, I don't think she could have asked for a nicer haul. Um, she has this vision spell. Again, just like last time, she's not super interested in that. She, she has this wand, which maybe would make the vision spell work better. Uh, she actually doesn't have enough money to buy both of those, however. Um, 
but she gets this uh, healing potion she can buy, and she can certainly afford that. Even better, though, are these winged boots. Her main disadvantage in the game is her tiny little short legs that don't carry her very far when walking across the path. These boots have wings, so her, the, the size of her legs don't matter. She's going to move four spaces no matter what if she can buy these boots. And guess what? She can afford it. So she's going to buy the boots. She's going to buy this potion. That takes care of all her money. Question is, is she going to try to sell something? She could put the wand up for sale. Someone might buy that. Um, would she want to? Um, she figures why not. She likes to make money. Does anyone want to buy this magic wand? And I think yes. Some people do. The only one who couldn't afford it, though, is Fry's. Fry's, he doesn't want it. So no one's going to buy the magic wand. No one's going to buy the vision spell. It's not even put up for sale. Okay, roll for the storm again. I'm currently certain if it passes, Tice or Red Tomato is in trouble. My bet is Tice. Let's see. Whew, they are lucky. The storm does not pass. Um, so Curly is, I guess, going to just be menacing going to go towards them like this. Dun, 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 dun. Fry's his turn. He has to decide whether to take another shot at that giant. I think he wants to. He doesn't want any giant to scare him. He's Fry's. Here we go. And two twos, that's four. Four is less than, four is equal to four, so the giant is defeated. Ooh. And Fry's will take, hmm, he'll take a red cube. We'll see what he gets out of the bag. And go from there. Oh, I forgot to roll the storm for Fry's. Ooh, that's the black, or the red knight. The red knight goes in A8. Red knight, if you beat him, you get this shield, which is nice. It's one of the, it's armor that's compatible with other armor. So you can use the shield along with something else. We'll roll for the storm for Fry's. Storm's still going. So Scooch just had her turn. Wasn't too noteworthy. She just picked up another quest. Though she's getting quite a few quests here. Um, what's noteworthy about it though is what she drew from the, the bag, which is the unicorn. The unicorn it begins the quest for the super anti-dragon weapon. Um, and it's the magical one. So that's, that's, that's very appealing to Scoots. Um, nice that that happened on her turn, I guess, in a, in a sort of way. Though really it would be better if it happened on the turn right before, because then she could she could have been moving towards it. Really a painful situation for Tice. She had hoped to kind of follow Red Tomato's apparent lead and try to lose the, um, the marauding Curly in the Labyrinth. However, if she was one more space, that guarantees a confrontation on on his next turn. So she's got to turn tail and go back the way she came, uh, away from him. You know, if the storm clears up, again, we're kind of in the same sort of situation. If the storm clears up, she could be a goner. Back underground, and this is, this is kind of amazing. And I have to tell you, I draw these tiles from different parts of the, the stack, so I don't think it's a, it's a shuffling issue, but, um, and plus, I've drawn other tiles for Mooney. This hasn't happened, but Weeder just ran across. I don't know if you can see it. It's dark in the underworld. I need a candle. Um, there's an avatar. Der. Day? Des? Des Der Verdampton? Des. Des Verdampton? Uh, another one of those. That's what she just spent most of the game fighting. Um, she's going to fight it again. This time, however, she gets an eight or better. Or no, six or better. And she's beaten it. She's got the power to beat these guys pretty easily. However, if, if their master comes a-calling, she's really no better than a little babe against it. Um, she gets another cube. She's going to turn it in for a coin. She wants some spending cash. And she gets a treasure. And she got some nectar. That's nice. That that's that'll fix her up if she's ever in trouble. Um, another cube on Derverdampton. It's getting stronger. Mooney doesn't care to keep fighting the Schatten. Uh, to to if it if Mooney wins, all he gets is a red cube. Red cube 
isn't going to do much for Mooney. He's very weak in melee, so he's going to draw another tile. That tile doesn't doesn't get uh, a token, so really nothing is going to happen except Mooney goes there. And that's going to do it for this session. I would like to keep going, but I don't want them to be too long. I feel like that makes it harder to watch. Um, and, you know, I, I, there's a lot of interesting situations that have been set up. I was, I was hoping that would happen. I didn't know for sure with these rules if, if there would be, um, if they would even come into play. But we're seeing some interesting situations. The whole curly storm standoff, I never foresaw that happening. Um, and then we also have some people who, who ha are showing some promise. I think Half Pint seems like she could be a strong player that the her receiving the money from her dragon master when she did really um paid off especially with um you know she was right by a place where she could put the money to good use um so that's pretty interesting weeder i'm 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 really interested to see what happens with her she's she's quite strong for where she is in the game but that strength like i've said maybe a couple times now but i'll say it again because it bears repeating that strength will will do her no good at a certain point it will really only help um somewhere so hope hopefully she ha she finds some use for her money uh to to help her come back mooney's kind of floundering red tomato and tice are kind of bound up um I feel like uh, Scoots. Scoots is looking good with the appearance of that um, that unicorn. I think that will give her some some something if she gets there in time. And there we go.